Hi guys, welcome back. Finally, this is what you all expecting. How exactly I Ching reading works? How many methods are they? And are they accurate? This will be my last video of basic I Ching theory. I want to divide today's content into three sections. In the first section, let's do a little review of what we have learned in the previous nine videos. In the second section, I will introduce you some popular I Ching reading methods. And in the last section, let's discuss why Confucius suggests us not to do any I Ching readings at all. So today's content will be a summary of this series, and also a link to the following new chapter, which will be all about basic I Ching reading theories. I hope you enjoy this last one. So far, we have learned what is I Ching and its three main principles, the philosophy behind I Ching and the philosophy behind these three main principles. Everything is constantly changing. Everything changes in an orderly manner. If we understand nothing is unchangeable, we shall find peace and harmony. We also have a deep understanding of what is Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang share three important features. First, they are opposite to each other. Second, they are equal to each other. Third, they are interchangeable. We reviewed a bit history about I Ching. Who created I Ching? Fu Xi, King Wen, and Confucius are the most influential and contributive towards I Ching. Then I broadly introduced you what are eight trigrams. Eight trigrams are eight fundamental natural phenomena on Earth, discovered by Fu Xi. They are Earth, Heaven, Fire, Water, River, Thunder, Mountain, and Wind. And then we went much in details about 64 hexagrams. How were they created? Who created them? And the meanings behind each line. Most importantly, the father and the mother of the 64 hexagrams, Qian and Kun. As long as you understand these two hexagrams, you pretty much understand the rest 62. Lastly, we distinguished two different type arrangements of eight trigrams, earlier heaven and the later heaven. Earlier heaven is arranged because of Chinese geographical features. The later heaven is arranged because of King Wen's political purpose. For the last 3,000 years, many great Chinese people have created lots of different reading methods based on the I Ching theory. Nowadays, these are the most popular ones. Wen Wang Gua or Liu Yao, Four Pillows of Destiny or Ba Zi, Plum Blossom Divination or Mei Hua Yi Shu, Feng Shui, Qi Men Dun Jia, Da Liu Ren. Each has its own unique strength in different things you want to do the reading. For instance, Feng Shui is all about using geographical locations to do the reading. It also teaches you how to harmonize the surrounding environments. However, Wen Wang Gua or Liu Yao is more focused on a particular event in your life. Such as, will I pass this exam, or will I get my next job, etc. Even though all these methods have their own strengths and weaknesses, they do share the exact same fundamental theories. The only difference is how they apply these theories into their unique reading systems. So these fundamental theories are, first, Yin Yang theory, which we have already mentioned. Second. A trigrams and their related resembles. Third, five elements and their relationships. Fourth, ten heavenly stems and the twelve earthly branches, including all the resembles and the relationships. Fifth, four symbols or four beasts and their resembles. These five points are gonna be my content for chapter two. 
to ensure you can quickly start to do some readings yourself at the chapter three, I will make this chapter as solid, but at the same time as easy as I can. I know right now you are more or less a bit excited. Who won't be if we can know the future? However, why on earth Confucius, one of the greatest men in the world, suggested us not to do any Yijing readings at all? Based on my own reading experience, this is what I understand, and also a few of suggestions to anyone who is interested in learning Yijing readings. First, reading never lies. The actual result might not be the same as what the reading says. It is only because you interpret in the wrong way at the beginning, or you don't really understand what the reading tries to tell you. So never ever put any doubts into each reading itself. Second, what will happen if I don't follow what the reading advised me to do? Well, the hard truth is you will always do what the reading wants you to do. Sometimes you simply feel you are in charge of things. Eventually, some sort of hidden energy will pull you back into where you mean to go. Third, the most important point you should keep in mind all the time: Yijing readings has no moral judgments. It simply answers the questions of what you have asked. Am I gonna win the lottery? Am I gonna survive from this illness? How much money I'm gonna win? How many days do I have left? The answer will simply be yes or no. Or actual number or actual date. But here is the thing: if I win five million dollars, is this a good thing? And if I only have five days left, is this a bad thing? Well, if you win five million dollars today, of course, at this moment, it will be a good thing for you. However, after a couple of years later, if you're looking backwards, or if you see your life as a whole. This won't be necessarily a good thing. And if you have only a few days left, maybe you will realize something you will never realize in your whole lifetime. So sometimes good things can become bad things, and bad things can become good things. Again, back to yin and yang, and back to basic I Ching theory. So any I Ching readings result is only locked. In that particular moment, time and space, it won't necessarily tell you the whole story. This is what you should always keep in mind. Let's go a step further. Imagine your dream is always want to be a doctor and save people's life, and you also did the reading. But the reading tells you, for some reason, you won't make as much money as the other doctor do, and also you won't be as famous as the other doctors are. In fact, you are leaving your hometown, go to somewhere very poorly to save local people's life in your whole lifetime. Will you still want to be a doctor in this scenario? Confucius doesn't really suggest us not to do any I Ching readings, but not hundred percent to believe it's good or bad. You should see your life as a process, not the result. Everything is changing. Anything good or bad is just a part of the progressing. Ask yourself what you should do, not what you can do. As long as you figure out what you should do, everything will become a tools for you, even reading itself. That's it for this video. I'm really glad that you finished this whole series, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in my new chapter, Basic I Ching Reading Theory. Again, please consider to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss anything new of what is coming up. Stay well and safe, and I'll see you in the near future. Bye for now.